All right, hello everyone, this is Miss McLaughlin. So last week, you started our unit, the intro to our next unit. You were to watch this video, Paleolithic Times, Five Things You Should Know. So, Paleolithic, that's an old stone age, okay? That's what we're thinking. They didn't have homes, they didn't have McDonald's, restaurants, they couldn't cook, right? So they had to adapt to their surroundings. So if you're thinking of the Paleolithic times, these people lived in groups between 20 to 30 people, mostly family members. Now, again, they didn't have a shelter, like a house that they could build. So what they had to do was live out of caves. That was their house. Now, during this time, people were nomadic, meaning that they traveled from one place to another. So they didn't have a steady shelter, right? So when it got really, really cold and the animals started to migrate to a warmer location, these people, these Paleolithic people, had to move with the animals. Because if all the animals left, and when it got really cold, all of their fruits and berries that they used to gather, all of those would be destroyed, then they wouldn't have anything to eat. So they wouldn't just stay there. They would have to move to get a different shelter, and to get more food. So if we're thinking of the Paleolithic times, these people were considered hunter-gatherers. They gathered fruits, berries, things like that to eat, and they hunted different animals. Now they hunted using different tools. So they didn't just go to a tool shop and pick up some tools. They had to create these with their own hands. So what they found in their environment were stones, bones, wood things like that, and they had to craft tools together in order to hunt animals and kill animals because that was the only thing that they could eat. So they hunted and they gathered. Um, there were small groups, 20 to 30 people, remember? And they were considered nomadic. So how did they stay warm and cook? Well, they didn't cook from a kitchen or a stove. What they did is they created fire. Fire was developed in the video they spoke about that. Um, so then they would, they learned how to use fire to cook the food. And number five, how do people during the Paleolithic age get their food? Remember, they hunted and gathered. Okay, that's how they got their food. So a little recap from last week. We spoke about the Paleolithic times, timelines, and primary and secondary sources. So I'm going to show a video quick, go into timelines and primary and secondary sources, and then we'll get into what we're learning this week. Hello friends, welcome to new happy learning video. Today, we're going to learn about our prehistory. The first thing we need to know is that our prehistory is divided into three different periods. Paleolithic, Neolithic, and the Metal Ages. So for right now, all we are focusing on is the Paleolithic era. That's what we will be focusing on over the next couple of weeks. The Paleolithic begins with the appearance of the first human beings and ends 8,000 years before Christ. Hmm, remember, this is a timeline. It's a straight line. It shows different dates um, before Common Era. It shows different images on this timeline. During the Paleolithic period, people were nomads, meaning that they didn't live in one place. No, they were constantly on the move in search of animals to hunt. As they were hunters and gatherers, they needed to follow the animals in order to capture them. And at the same time, they collected wild fruits they found on their way. They lived in tribes, in small groups formed by families, and they found refuge in caves where they would paint on the wall. These paintings were done with a mixture of charcoal, earth, animal fat, and water. Look, here are a few examples. The truth is, it's absolutely fascinating to think that these first paintings, these first artistic representations, were drawn thousands of years ago, don't you think? Both Paleolithic men and women wore animal skins which they had hunted previously. 
and they used tools such as an axe and spears made out of stones, wood and bones, which they themselves carved. Okay, so we're going to stop it there for right now because again, we are only focusing on the Paleolithic era. Okay, so now that we recap that, we went over timelines and we were supposed to read these pages, but I want to point out up here in the top right hand corner of every single lesson you will get has objectives. Remember, we spoke about objectives are what you will be able to learn by the end of the lesson. Okay, so the objectives for this lesson, I can understand various ways of measuring the passage of time, and I can determine the differences between history and prehistory and among various calendar systems. So those objectives will be explained in your lessons. Okay, so we spoke about timelines. Well, what are timelines? A timeline tells a story. It is a calendar of events that are recorded in order of when they happened. It is a tool that helps us to know when important events have happened. So remember, it's a straight line, and the events that are the oldest will be first, and the newest ones will be at the end. So if we're reading just like a book, we're reading from left to right. The oldest events are going to be to the left. The newest events are going to be to the right. Okay? Timelines can be used to show the events of a person's life, important events in history, and to sequence things that have happened. Then we spoke about primary and secondary sources. So, primary sources. Information created at the time of the event by the person directly involved. Examples are diaries, speeches, letters, autobiographies. Remember, an autobiography is someone writing about themselves. A secondary source, information from somewhere else or by a person not directly involved in the event. Okay, so encyclopedia, textbooks, biographies, because a biography is you're writing about someone else's life. Okay, so primary and secondary sources, we went over this last week, um, a little PowerPoint. Okay, so I'm just sliding through these. So if I have a letter, Okay, written by, let's see, let's go back to one of these ones. So this is an original letter written by Thomas Jefferson to John Adams in 1788. So this was the original letter written by Thomas Jefferson himself. So would this letter be considered a primary or secondary source? It would be considered a primary source because it was directly written by that person at the time of the event, okay? But a textbook, we go to textbook, this is a secondary source. So if we open a social studies textbooks, okay, in middle school, we will find different events that happened, maybe about World War I, okay? This was a war that happened in the past. It's not occurring right now. And those people that wrote in the textbooks, the authors of the textbooks, they were not directly involved in World War I. They were not fighting the war involved in that event, okay? Because that happened many years ago. So they're writing about the event, but they were not directly involved, so that's a secondary source, okay? So that's the difference between primary and secondary. Again, the objectives for this lesson, I can understand how to properly evaluate historical sources, and I can understand the differences between the value of primary and secondary sources and artifacts. Okay, so that's a little recap from last week. Now, moving into this week, we are going to be focusing on vocabulary. Only vocabulary. Because it's really important to understand, so moving forward when we throw out words such as turning point, settlement, you guys will know exactly what those words mean. Okay, so to start off though, this video that I'm recording right now will be posted right here. It says watch this video, then put the password on the line to show me that you actually watched the video. So some of you have been skipping this step, and that's a big no-no. So the password is CAVE, C-A-V-E, CAVE, because we're talking about 
thinking of cavemen and women, okay? So that's a password that you're going to write on the line. I'm going to stop and point to the objectives for this lesson. I can identify unfamiliar vocabulary. I can identify and define terms associated with the Paleolithic and the Neolithic eras. Okay, so the Paleolithic era occurred first, then it goes into the Neolithic. You don't have to worry about what the Neolithic era was yet, because we're just focusing on the Paleolithic era. But these vocabulary terms are used in both eras. So now, play the Kahoot. No nickname. So when you go to Kahoot, it asks for a nickname. No, we're not going to do that. What you need to enter, you must enter your first name and your last initial. So an example, if your name was Bob, you'd put Bob R. If your last name begins with an R. Okay, so you would click on this Kahoot link and you would enter your first name, last initial, and you would play the Kahoot. This Kahoot is a um, from last week's information. It's kind of a check-in to see what you learned from last week. Now, using the draw tool, circle the vocabulary terms that you recognize on page one below. So you would go up here and you would click draw. You would slide down, it says on page number one. So you slide down right here where it says vocabulary opener. The directions are listed again for you. From the list below, circle any words that look familiar. So you would go to draw and maybe, um, I see agriculture and maybe that word is familiar to me. Well, then you would press on a color and you would circle agriculture if it looks familiar to you. And you would do that for all of the words that look familiar to you, okay? When you are done with that, don't forget to check off the boxes. And then the last thing to do on this page says draw a picture that represents each definition in the boxes, pages two through six below. Or you can search for an image that represents each definition and copy and paste it into the box. So let's scroll down. Again, the directions are rewritten for you. Draw an image to represent the definition or search for an image and copy and paste it. So we have all of your words on the left-hand side and then the definition in the middle column. So turning point, settlement, revolution, modify, agriculture, dwelling, Fertile, culture, social classes, crops, reliable, characteristic. Adapt, domesticate. Okay, so I scrolled all the way to the bottom because I don't want to miss any information. So then I go back up and for all of these, what you are going to do is you're going to either draw a picture or find one on the internet and copy and paste it for a symbol that will help you remember each vocabulary term. So they don't have to be all the same as anybody in the class, right? It's what will help you remember. So say I go to agriculture and the definition is farming. So if I'm going to draw a picture, maybe how I'm going to remember farming is if I draw maybe some grass, right? And then maybe I'm going to think of different crops that can grow, right? And then maybe I'd finish my picture, draw different crops that are going to grow that we can think farmers plant, right? Or you can simply copy and paste an image from the internet, okay? My lovely little drawing right there. I could finish it, make it very pretty, but again, it's how I'm going to remember it. Doesn't matter if anybody else uses that symbol to help them remember it, okay? So that is the first opener. Then your second lesson is going to be review the vocabulary terms below and then play this Kahoot. The objectives are the same because we're just focusing on vocabulary. So you're going to scroll down. There's different images and definitions of all of the vocabulary terms that you will have to know. Okay, so you scroll all the way to the bottom read all of these. It's really important that you're reading the definitions because, hint, hint, there will be graded assignments on these vocabulary terms. And then the last um, activity you will have for this week is a vocabulary form, okay? So you're going to create a form 